Hi, I'm Mike, Poketips Mike, and a new Pokemon Sword and Shield trailer just came out and revealed quite a bit of information to us. The biggest thing being that the part one of the DLC, the Isle of Armor, is coming out June 17th. And we also officially had Galarian Slowbro shown off to us, and we could finally see what he looks like. No more little partial teasers. However, there was also lots of information that came out around the same time that was not shown in the trailer. The Pokemon Sword and Shield website actually just updated and finally gave us the names for the two new Reggie Pokemon, as well as the typings for the Galar forms of the Kanto legendary birds Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. So let's go over all of that in this video. Alright, so first things first, let's take a look at Galarian Slowbro. So this is it right here. This is the Pokemon we've been wondering about since January, the one they teased to us. Now we finally get to see what it looks like, and I think it is such an interesting design. So it's Poison and Psychic type, and that comes through pretty clearly in the design. I like how they took the shell off of its tail and put it on its hand. It looked kind of interesting, and you can see how they turned the tip of it purple, kind of to signify how it could use that for poison type attacks. Also, fun in fact, that shell was originally supposed to be its own Pokemon, but they scrapped it back in Generation 2 before Gold and Silver came out. That would have been kind of cool. I wish it was its own Pokemon. Maybe someday they'll bring it back. I don't know. Lore-wise, that's what happens when you take a Shelder and it clamps onto it, but that doesn't look like a Shelder to me. It's 5'3 and weighs 155.4 pounds. I'm actually kind of surprised. That seems kind of light for the Hermit Crab Pokemon. And let's read a little bit about its flavor text. I love reading this stuff. It gained the poison type from the shock of Shelder's Bite. A Shelder Bite set off a chemical reaction within the species inside of Galar Slowpoke's body, causing Galarian Slowbro to gain the poison type. The Shelder sometimes unconsciously bites down harder on Slowbro's arm, causing an itch that drives Slowbro to start swinging its arm around indiscriminately and smashing its surroundings. This makes Galarian Slowbro a highly dangerous Pokemon. That thing's in pain! That poor Pokemon! Oh my goodness! I know a lot of people like to do these dark Pokédex entry videos. I feel like this is gonna be a great one for that. And over here it says, Beat strong opponents to the draw. Although this Pokemon is normally zoned out, facing out against strong opponents activates the stimulants in its body, sending them coursing through its nervous system and delivering a jolt. When this happens, Slowbro's expression sharpens. With a speed that puts even the quickest reflexes to shame, Slowbro readies its shelter and makes poisonous liquid shoot from the shelter's tip. Called it. Called it, called it, called it. So that's pretty interesting, the whole beating strong opponents to the draw. I don't know what its ability Quick Draw does right now, but I'm assuming that somehow, someway, this ability is going to boost its speed or maybe give priority to some of its attacks. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. And here we get to see its signature move, Shell Side Arm. Shell Side Arm is a poison type special move in which this Pokemon fires poisonous liquid from the tip of Shelder attached to its arm. This move may poison the target. Moreover, it inflicts either physical or special damage depending on which will damage the target more. Ooh, that's very interesting. So for competitive Pokemon players, that's actually really cool. It makes it kind of like a wall breaker type Pokemon. Normally, you could switch some things like a Blissey into a special attacker, and Blissey eats up those special attacks like breakfast. However, when the game does its calculations and figures out that physical attacks would do more, it would switch over to a physical based attack, which is really interesting. And since it says right up here it's a poison type special move, that means all you really gotta do is just EV train this thing in special attack, and then it'll change the type of damage it does from there. So this actually looks like it's gonna be a very good signature move. Awesome. Awesome for Galar Slowbro. Now, let's take a look at the new Regis. I was waiting for these names. All right, so our electric type Reggie is going to be called Regilecki. I was kind of hoping for Regilectric, but I guess this works too. This is going to be the Electron Pokemon, and its type is confirmed to be pure electric, no dual typing here. It has an ability called Transistor, which is a new ability, don't know what it does at the time. Maybe it'll tell us about that a little bit below here. Now this thing also has its own signature move called Thunder Cage. In this electric type special move, the Pokemon fires furious bolts of energy from its lower half, trapping opponents directly below it in a cage of lightning. Thunder Cage doesn't only deal damage to opponents, when it lands, it will also cause them to be trapped within an electrified cage, causing damage every turn for four to five turns and preventing them from fleeing or being swapped out. So that's pretty good. I'm assuming since it's a signature move, it's going to do some decent damage, and it also has that trapping effect like fire spin. So again, pretty decent move for competitive. You bring this Pokemon in, you trap something that it can easily beat, and boom, free knockout for you. 
I also think it's pretty safe to assume that this thing is going to be similar to the other Reggies, where it has a base stat total of 580, so overall, it looks like it's going to be a pretty solid Pokemon. Now, reading its flavor text, it says here, it has a body with bottomless supply of electricity. This Pokemon absorbs electrons to live. Electrical energy makes up most of its body. Its Electro-type moves are said to pack the greatest power of any used by Electric-type Pokemon. Alright, I'm expecting its ability to boost up its electric attacks by a lot, and I'm expecting it to have a very high base special attack. That right there, that gives me some high expectations for this Pokemon. Ooh, but over here, strength restrained by special equipment. Maybe it's not gonna be so good after all. Researchers have determined that Regilecki's body is fitted with what appears to be special insulating equipment that does not conduct electricity. Some theorize that in ancient times, people tormented by a Regilecki fitted the equipment onto the Pokemon to restrain its powers. Ah, I see that right there. I guess that's the blue stuff that's spiraling around its body parts right there. So maybe, after all, it's not going to be too powerful, although I'm hoping we could release the restraints and unleash that full electrical power. This thing is high potential, it has a cool design, I'm hoping it's good. Now, on to the Dragon-type Reggie. So yes, this is confirmed, this is a Dragon-type Pokemon. I mean, come on, look at that design. You could not tell me that was not a Dragon-type. I think we almost all saw that coming. Now for the official name, it is called Reggie Drago. Categorized as the Dragon Orb Pokemon, once again, pure Dragon-type, and it has a new ability called Dragon's Maw. Now, I want to see what its signature move is. So its signature move is Dragon Energy. The Pokemon assumes a shape similar to a dragon's head, then fires intense dragon energy from its mouth. The more HP the user has remaining, the higher the move's power. So it's essentially like a dragon-type eruption or water spout move. If it's exactly the same, then it'll actually be a pretty strong move. It'll have 150 base power. So definitely keep an eye out for this Pokemon. It'll definitely pack a punch. Reggie Drago's body is composed of crystallized dragon energy. The energy is densest in its central core. Thanks to its body composition, Reggie Drago can use dragon type moves with greater power than other Pokemon. But watch, over there it's gonna say it's restrained and held back by people in ancient times nerfing it. <laughs> yup, the sealed Reggie Drago. Folklore tells that the legendary Pokemon Regigigas tried to create a Pokemon from crystallized dragon energy, but ran out of crystals and was only able to complete the head. People of old feared that if Regidrago was completed, it would rain destruction on their land, so they sealed it away within a temple. Maybe, just maybe, when the Crown Tundra comes out, we shouldn't go out catching these Pokemon. They sound pretty destructive. Okay, next up, let's talk about the legendary birds. Now, I think we all want to know the typing for these Pokemon, so here we go! Galarian Articuno is going to be a Psychic and Flying type. That's gonna be weird to me. Articuno not being an Ice type. Although, to be fair, you can't really take away the flying type since it's a legendary bird. How could you have a legendary bird that's not part flying? Some Pokemon definitely need like three types. It has the ability Competitive, which raises its special attack when any of its stats are lowered, so that's a pretty decent ability. And it's categorized as the cruel Pokemon. Oh no, Articuno, what did they do to you? Why are you so cruel now? I actually want to jump into the flavor text here first. A cruel, arrogant, legendary Pokemon. Once every several decades, this migratory Pokemon appears in the Crown Tundra. Oh, how nice, it's gonna appear when we play. For a long time, it was thought to be the same legendary Pokemon as the Articuno previously discovered in other regions. Though cold and callous in personality, it moves in a highly refined manner. It keeps itself airborne through constant use of its psychic powers, almost never flapping its wings. Okay, there we go right there! So it doesn't need the flying type if it uses its psychic to fly, I think that's fine. Let's read about its freezing psychic power. This Pokemon battles using intense psychic powers that act directly on the cells of living beings. The beams of psychic energy fired from its eyes have a particularly potent effect. The slightest touch of these beams leave the victim totally immobilized as if frozen. The Pokemon finishes off immobilized opponents using the condensed psychic power of its wings. And its signature move? Freezing Glare. Freezing Glare is a Psychic-type special move in which the Pokémon attacks by firing Psychic Power from both eyes. This move may also leave the target frozen. 
That's really interesting, actually. A Psychic-type move that has a chance of freezing the opponent. I don't think we've ever seen that before. I'm also wondering, most freezing moves only have a 10% chance of freezing the opponent. Will Freezing Glare have a higher chance of that, or is it only going to be 10%? Once again, only time will tell, although we'll know in about, like, two weeks. I'm really liking this so far. All these Pokemon seem to have really good signature moves, and I love the lore behind them. Alright, so let's jump into Galarian Zapdos. Awesome design. It is a fighting and flying Pokemon. That's wild. So this is the strong legs Pokemon, and it has the ability Defiant, which, let me use my psychic powers here, raises your attack when one of your stats are lowered. I totally didn't look that up. I did. Woohoo! Look at this art right here! That looks fantastic! Alright, let's look at its signature move. Thunderous Kick! In this fighting-type physical move, the Pokémon overwhelms the target with lightning-like movements before delivering a kick. This also lowers the target's defense stats. Assuming this move has any sort of decent power, I'm assuming this is going to be a great move for this Galarian Zapdos to know, because since it lowers the target's defense stats, every time you use it, it's going to do more and more damage. Can we just talk about this design again? I love it. I love it. I love seeing the official art here. Original Zapdos. Whatever. That, it's, it's cool. It's cool. Galarian Zapdos, though. That is it. That. I love this Pokemon. The colors, the everything, it's just perfection. It's like a big fighting chicken. Move over, Blaziken. All right. So a legendary Pokemon that loves battling mighty opponents. Once every several decades, this migratory Pokemon appears in the Crown Tundra. Again, so convenient for us that all these migratory Pokémon are appearing in the Crown Tundra right as we get there. For a long time, yeah yeah, same as the Articuno, this belligerent, battle-hungry Pokémon seems unable to resist challenging Pokémon it senses may be stronger than itself. So I feel like this and Cub Food, they're gonna have a nice little clash since they both like to challenge Pokémon right there. In battle, this Pokémon overwhelms opponents with its speedy movements and ferocious kicks using its naturally mighty legs. I don't know, this thing kind of looks like it skips leg day to me, but you know what they say, never judge a book by its cover. When it leaps down cliffs and rocky mountainsides in ultra-high-speed zigzag movements, it is said to resemble a bolt of lightning. However, its wings seem to have atrophied, and it appears to be a poor flyer. So I'm noticing a reoccurring trend here. These Pokémon, these legendary birds, aren't really good flyers anymore. However, it seems like they're the top of the top at their little specialty. And finally, last but not least, let's jump in to Galarian Moltres. Which, if you said was a dark and flying type, you would be correct. Ooh, it is a new ability too called Berserk. Let's hope we can find out something about that down there. It's also the Malevolent Pokemon. Very, very interesting. Again, this design is epic. I love what they did with the legendary birds. Maybe not Articuno, but Zapdos and Moltres. The Galar forms, perfect. Perfect. Wouldn't change a thing. Now let's see, the first few lines here are exactly the same as the other legendary birds, but it has a haughty personality and conducts itself calmly according to its own whims. Ah, good, while you have Galarian Slowbro smashing and destroying things, at least we have one calm Pokémon coming with the DLC. An aura like a blazing pillar of fire! It exudes the energy churning within its body as an aura akin to a column of raging fire, leaving ordinary Pokémon unable to even approach it. It is especially skilled at attacking opponents' minds by spreading its wings wide and unleashing a wicked aura. Opponents hit by such attacks are overcome with deep fatigue as if all their energy has been burned away. And look at that action shot of this Pokémon right there. Look at that devious smile. No wonder it's such a calm Pokémon, because it's the best and it knows it. Now let's see, its signature move right here, Fiery Wrath. In this Dark-type special move, the Pokémon transforms its wrath into a fire-like aura to attack. It may also make the opponent Pokémon flinch. And here we get to see the official art for this Pokémon. Absolutely beautiful. Woo, I am excited now. I feel like they showed us the wrong stuff today. I want to play the Crown Tundra now. I want to catch all these legendaries. Why do we have to wait all the way until, what is it, November for the Crown Tundra? I want Galarian Zapdos and Moltres, and I want them now. These Pokemon look so cool, and I have a feeling a lot of them are going to be really good too. So my friends, like I said, a lot of information here that was not shown off in the trailer. They give us little teasers of these Pokemon flying around, doing their thing, but here on the website, we really got to the meat. We 
got to learn their typing, we got to learn a little bit more about them, see their signature moves. I am so excited now. I am really, really excited. We had a drought of Pokemon news for a while, but today, my friends, today we got the good stuff. So down in the comments section, let me know which one of these six Pokemon you're the most excited to use. For me, it has to be the Galarian Zapdos. I just think that Pokemon is so cool. Galarian Moltres is right behind it, and Regilecki is probably a close third right there. Oh, I'm just so excited now. Give us the Crown Tundra. Forget the Isle of Armor. So my friends, thanks so much for watching the video. If you haven't already and you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing to the channel if you're new and you want to see more of my Pokemon content. I have lots more stuff coming out, and when we get the DLC in a couple of weeks, I'll be covering everything you need to know about it, giving you lots of tips and tricks. So you'll definitely want to be subscribed so you don't miss any of that content. Thanks again for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next one.